Okay, so good evening uh, and welcome to General Council of September 13th. Uh, I'm first going to begin uh, by identifying any media on the line. I see Donna Durek. Zero time. Sorry, there's a lag. Yeah, no problem. Good evening, Donna. Is there any representatives from the Turtle Island? Hi. Okay, seeing none. I'll, I'll go next to uh, any changes, additions, or deletions to the agenda. Okay, seeing or hearing none, I will at this time look for a mover and seconder to adopt the General Council agenda of September 13th. So oh, I see Audrey has her hand raised. Sorry, just to confirm, Audrey, are you moving? Hey, Mark. Hi, Jeff. I am. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Jeff, we're just getting the, uh, the agenda adopted. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moved by Audrey, seconder. Mark. Oh, sorry, Hazel, go ahead. Yeah, I had an addition to the agenda. Sure. Is there a background? Yeah, it's just about uh, the declared um, federal holiday for Monday, September 19th for the, um, the, the Queen's funeral. Okay, thank you. Hazel, is there anything further? Okay, seeing or hearing none then, it's been moved by Audrey and seconded by Nathan. All in favor to adopt the general council agenda of September 13th. Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, so we have uh, an exciting evening, uh, this general council. It's uh, our first order of business is our officiation of the swearing in ceremony of uh, Councillor Greg Fraser. Uh, we are, and again, please bear with us to those online. Uh, we are uh, half in the chambers and half online as we maneuver through a hybrid model um, in doing business. So our, our goal is to get, uh, when we're back into the chambers fully, our goal is to have it still maintained via live. So we're still figuring out some technical issues. Um, so please just bear with us. But again, if I can have um, Mr. Greg come forward as well as Dwayne Jacobs who will be our officiant to begin the swearing in uh, the oath of office. So you should see them on the screen coming forward. Okay, and at this time again, uh, I do appreciate and wanna say now to, uh, to Duane for, for being the officiant to begin the swearing in oath ceremony of Councillor Greg Fraser. So at this point in time, I will pass the floor over to Duane. I do solemnly and sincerely affirm before the people of Six Nations of the Grand River that I will faithfully perform my duties, carry out my responsibilities, promote the welfare of the people, safeguard the security of the community, and will in no way betray the people's trust. Should I break my oath, I shall be willing to submit myself to disciplinary action and accept the penalty as determined by the Integrity Commission. This is my solemn oath. Thank you, Mr. President. Please execute the document. Wow. Uh -huh. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce Mr. Greg uh, sworn in to the 58th elected council. Congratulations, Greg. So just uh, just really quickly, if I can, uh, again, thank you, Nyawa, uh, Dwayne, uh, as well as Greg. I'm wondering if maybe, Greg, if you want to uh, come forward uh, and say a, a few words, uh, and then we'll um, maybe we'll swap chairs. Yeah. So I'm just going to allow Greg to say uh, a few words. Yes, I would like to thank everyone to for welcoming me here tonight. It's quite an honor to represent Six Nations. We, as everyone knows, we're probably the largest and most prosperous uh, reservation and uh, Indian nation in Canada. Uh, many, many, many nations look towards us as leaders. And we have many issues I think that uh, are coming forward, especially with the new uh, land judgment agreement coming up this, uh, this spring. So it's going to be, uh, I think, a very busy and, and fruitful, hopefully a fruitful year for Six Nations. And I'm uh, very, very honored to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Your package is right here too, if you want. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Sure. Sorry, uh, we're just going to take a quick photo as per request of Jody. <laughs> so give us just a minute or so. Okay, do you want to go in front or up there? Sure. So, this is the first time where you're not going to be in the middle. Yeah, my request on you. Yeah. Okay, this time, Mr. Fraser, congratulations. You would hold back. I'd like you to go straight by Greg. You would hold back. Nathan, you would hold the other side. You would hold the other side. Okay, congratulations. Yes. Welcome to the team. Welcome. Now let's get to work. <laughs> okay, so that uh, completes uh, the swearing in ceremony uh, for this evening. Again, want to welcome uh, Councillor Greg Frazier to the team. Uh, we have lots to catch up uh, and get him briefed on. Uh, so our team at the office here will be working uh, with Greg to make sure that he has all uh, all what he needs. Uh, and from this um, point on, we'll be now attending all of our uh, meetings moving forward. Again, even with uh, our new, uh, I guess, process in which we're uh, shifting. So there's a lot to catch up on, Greg. And again, want to just uh, send you the most uh, uh, well wishes and congratulations and welcome to the team. Okay, our next delegation we have this evening, and just a uh, FYI, uh, Councillor uh, Nathan Wright will assume uh, chair duties at 7 p.m. I will be shifting out to attend uh, the special interlocutor uh, forum. I'll be speaking on a panel in Edmonton, so I have to catch a flight from Toronto. So just a FYI for that. Our next delegation that we have is Jeff Thomas from First Nations uh, Cable and Internet. Uh, which again is an update as the uh, presentation as we uh, move forward here with our internet project. So with that being said, I'll pass the floor uh, over to Jeff uh, to provide us with an update uh, on that initiative. Oops, sorry, Jeff, you are on mute. Hi, Mark. Uh, congratulations, Greg. Um, known Greg a long time. He'll do, he'll do wonders in there. Um, I guess what I really wanted to do is talk about uh, where we are with our project. Uh, the government has broken it down in three phases or milestones, I guess they're calling it. Um, the first one is the planning, the setup of the proposal, the, um, all the mapping, everything's been done up to that point. 
um, and accepted by the government. Uh, the second part of it is the backbone, and that's our connection from our office over to Middleport. That is now complete. Um, the actual fibers in the ground, um, we did the testing, it's all passed. Um, we're waiting on Hydro One. They ran into a problem with some of their uh, hardware and they needed an upgrade. It's supposed to be arriving tomorrow by courier. So we're hoping by the beginning of the week, we'll be testing this. We want to go live October 3rd. We originally talked about September 6th, but Hydro, I don't know what happened there. They kind of uh, fumbled the ball a little bit and uh, never tested their equipment. But make a long story short, we're just pushed back a month. That's all. It's not too bad. Everything else is a go. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, that's a 100 gigabit link that we've established. That's a phenomenal feat. And it's something that uh, there's, I know, municipalities that are crying for something like this. So um, it's a link of the future. It's not just a Band-Aid or just enough to suffice what our needs are now. What we're building is something for the future. Um, I talked to the Hydro guys. They told me uh, they're going to get into this DWDM, they call it. Uh, one fiber, which we have active right now, that's going to be for a uh, 100 gigabit link. We'll be able to we'll be able to run seventy two fiber or seventy two gigabit links on the one fiber. That's how advanced this technology is. So something in the future uh, we don't know what's ahead of us. Um, uh, one good thing that COVID really brought into everybody was it identified all the problems on the network. It doesn't matter who they are, who how big they are how small they are, everybody had trouble with their networks. And COVID proved that to everybody. So this link we're building is something out of the future. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. It's something that uh, is needed here and will sustain what, what our needs are in the future. Okay, um, the next step. So that's two of the milestones that we have established. These are up and they're done, they're completed. The last part of this is what they call the last mile. Now the last mile is the actual fibers that are being laid to uh, feed our customers and feed um, Six Nations in general, all the Six Nations. Now um, the government has really given us a hard time with uh, uh, getting this contract signed, um, but They've accepted all of our proposal now. Um, hopefully by, I'm hoping the beginning of the week, we should have that contract in hand. They said two weeks. So uh, Monday will be the second week. So we're, we're hoping and we'll see something then. Once that's in place, um, we'll be able to start our project. We've already spent our equity. That's why we got the backbone built. That was uh, $1.4 million that it took to build this line in from uh, Middleport. And that's completed. So this last part is, is the actual grant now that uh, we're trying to establish. Um, once that happens, we can begin. Uh, the design is done. Um, it's just getting the okay to, to go ahead with this. The contractors are on board, we're waiting. So uh, I'm hoping within the next week or so, we should have some good news there. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about, and I know um, uh, I keep, the council has, uh, in general, has said that, uh, you know, they wanted to support us, they wanted to try and help us in any way we can. I've approached uh, the Royal Bank and what I've done is I've asked for uh, kind of like a bridging loan or uh, uh, overdraft kind of thing on this. You know, yourselves, you guys deal with this all the time. The government's pretty 
hard to get a payment out of them, uh, three, four months usually to get something out of them. So what I'm concerned about is we'll get the project started and then we're waiting for money. And uh, contractors, I really don't want to have to stop them, you know, but I can't ask them to go on without being able to pay them right away, that type of thing. So what I'm looking for is uh, maybe some type of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, what's the word I want to, maybe if I go get counsel to co-sign for us with uh, overdraft with the Royal or something like that, or assist us with that. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether you guys would be willing to do something like that. And I know, you know, I mean, it's, it is what it is, right? Um, trying to get $11 million out of the government is going to be a chore and a half. Uh, I'm sure you guys are aware of that. So I know the, the first part, they're going to release 20% right away as soon as we sign this contract. And that's good. That gets us gets capital flowing. But after that, when we're turning in receipts and all that, there's going to be a, a a lull in between the payments. And that's where I'm concerned about. I don't want to get the contractors going and then, you know, have to shut them down or whatever. So that's something I, I, I got a meeting on Thursday with the Royal to try and iron this all out. So I don't know if they're gonna require a, a co-signer on that or anything, or if that's something you guys would do, or I don't know if he's done it in the past, that type of thing. So. If there's something you can help us with, that's that's probably it. Hey, thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeff, for providing us with that update. Just quick question. I'm wondering if there's any uh, any way that we, I mean, obviously, yes, we do know that in terms of process with government funding is always, uh, you know, it's not the, the most, uh, you know, smoothest process, but wondering if maybe there's opportunity for us to even engage, um, you know, with government to, to just to speak on these matters to say that, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, we can't have this hold up this, this, this project in general. Right. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm wondering if maybe that's a first step before maybe even uh, going to the potential of having council uh, decide if, you know, if uh, co-signing or for assistance needed in that nature. I'm just wondering if maybe our office can maybe assist to have a meeting and a sit down with all key stakeholders and parties, obviously, including yourself, you know, the chief's office and, and, and representatives from the government to say, here are the issues. Yes, the 20% is a good start. Yes, we know as we maneuver through this initiative, there's going to be, uh, you know, challenges, but the, the, the most challenge that we don't want to see or barrier is the release of funds. So I'm wondering Absolutely. if maybe that's, maybe that's a first step that I can, we could assist with. I'd like to see that. That would help a lot. I think um, the Royal would like to see that as well, as long as they know you're in the project, right? So yes. you're involved in this thing. Right. And uh, I won't know what their requirements are, or even if they'd consider it. I don't even know that until after Thursday meeting. Okay. So maybe, Tammy, if we could just make a note, and then we'll touch base with you, Jeff, off the line after Thursday to then okay. maybe set up a meeting with the, those key stakeholders through government. Yes, that would help. I don't know. Maybe I won't even need it. I don't know. I'm just kind of worried about keeping this running smoothly. Eh? Yeah. And that, you know. And our job really, you know, is is to support you, to support this community, and getting and getting what we need. So right. anything that we can do. And uh, we got this slated. Like I'm using a lot of uh, solo uh, cable out of Branford. Is who I've been using. I also have Gord, but Gord's been tied up with the water quite a bit. So we intend on having fourth line done this year, for sure. From uh, Polytech out to the tracks, there's roughly about 200 homes. We'll be, we'll be passing all of that for sure. That'll be done by Christmas. And then probably branches off on the, the crossroads, uh, starting at Tuscarora right through the Kiwi Road, just doing the, those front pieces. Um, Solo's willing to put two crews on the road if we need it. Um, I'm not sure when Gord will be available. Um, he said it was kind of a day by day thing, but uh, once we get everybody, 
like we get some money released from the government and we'll start getting these guys out on the road. Once that happens, they're gonna get, we're gonna just bury pipe and bury our drops to the houses. We get that in, it doesn't matter if the ground freezes or whatever, we're able to continue on all, all through the winter. Uh, we have what we call a jetting equipment that we can blow the pipes, um, we can activate, we can splice all of that during the cold. So it doesn't matter about that. It's just getting the pipe, the coverage into the ground. That's that's the big issue right now. Government doesn't care. Time frame doesn't mean anything. Weather doesn't mean anything to these guys. They got a procedure. They follow it to the T, and we have to follow them. And it's unfortunate. I get calls. I'm, I'm sure uh, Tammy was telling me you guys were getting calls and I'm doing everything I can to get this thing going. But like I say, we got to follow their procedures. They're the ones that's got all the strings. So until we can uh, get them to open the purse up a little bit, then we can get rolling. So that's pretty much it what I have for today. Thanks. Uh, thanks for, for that, uh, Jeff. I'm going to open the floor up for any further questions or comments for Jeff or many counselors. Jeff. Yes. Yeah, I hear Carrie. Carrie, you have the floor? Yeah, Jeff. So what is your time frame now to get in, getting to the down below, down, down to River Road and up upper end? Uh, what's your time frame? Has it changed much since uh, we, we last talked? Um, no, not really, other than uh, it got shoved back a little bit. We're looking at two to three years to complete the whole reserve. That means everybody, all the way uh, roads that only have a few homes right at what we call the last mile. We're looking at a maximum of three years to finish it all. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you uh, for that uh, question. Carrie, I have next in queue, Audrey and then Melba. Audrey, you have the floor. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Good, Audrey. How's yourself? Pretty good. I just uh, have a follow-up follow question to Carrie. Says, and that question is, do you have a map available for your the roads that you're going to be doing so people can anticipate when there is the fiber will go by their home? Yes, we're going to, we have a website that we're going to release all this information on. We'll probably utilize the radio station and we'll also utilize the local papers as well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Just, just uh, thanks for bringing that up, Audrey. I know that was brought up last, uh, last uh, update as well, uh, Jeff. By, by all means, uh, we have our comms people here in the office as well that can help uh, assist in getting communication out to community. So, Please, I believe uh, Katie and Caitlin are both on the line. So if we could connect, uh, you know, our people with yours, it can also be another avenue to get communication out. Okay, well, we're just just getting the maps in and everything. The Solo's doing our design as well. So um, once I have all that, I wanted to send to Public Works for one. K.L. Martin has requested as well. And then I'll make the public know as well. So. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, yeah, for that, Jeff. Uh, Melba. Yes, 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 Oh, dear. All right, just one second, Melba. I just want to double check something. Okay. Feedback. One second. Is everybody on? Maybe if I could just get. Those on mute. Sorry, just one second, Melba. Okay, can you just can you test it now, Melba? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Is is there is there another device um, connected, Melba, on your end? No, not right now. Okay, there, that's better now. Go ahead, Melba. Uh, hi, Jeff. Yeah, hi, Jeff. Uh, thanks uh, for being with us tonight. I'm glad to see that your business is moving along. Moving along. We always want our own people, certainly, to assist us with any way they can. 
especially when it's the whole reserve. My question is, uh, we always want HDI to partner with us. We've uh, asked several times, no correspondence. We've asked them for the roads, we've asked them for the gas lines, all those things along the way. And I'm wondering if you have reached out to HDI. I did at the start, I'm still waiting for their letter. <laughs> so they haven't really, they, they had a vote on it. They agreed to what we were doing. They were supposed to give me a letter um, verifying that and I still haven't gotten that. So I haven't gone back. I just left it as it was. So I figure it's coming sooner or later. Well, hopefully your request uh, certainly uh, can come forward. That would be nice if, uh, if the entire community could see people like yourselves that move ahead with uh, supporting the whole reserve. Thanks, Jeff. Yes, we made sure we contacted them and we had meetings with them as well as you guys and uh, they were all on board. But I know um, the lawyer fellow, I can't think, think of his name. Uh, he's, he was supposed to write a letter and I haven't heard from him yet. Thank you. Uh... Thanks, uh, Jeff, for your response. Uh, Michelle, I see next in queue. This is great to hear, and thanks, Jeff, for the update. So I, um, I'm anticipating that if I were to come way up on <laughs> Chiefswood Road. So with that, I'll move to a uh, motion to accept this as information. Okay, perfect. Thank you, uh, Michelle. It's been moved by Michelle. Is there a seconder? Second by Nathan. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, uh, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. So Jeff, we'll follow up with, uh, with that item. If you, uh, Tammy uh, from the office here, um, if you two can maybe catch up Friday after your Thursday meeting, Yes, um, and then we'll go from there in terms of our uh, scheduling, you know, government officials and, and key stakeholders for the follow up meeting to, okay, to this that item. Would be great. I have one other thing, Mark. I forgot. Um, I approached uh, Gary Joseph. Uh, he's the owner of Sixtel, and uh, I asked him, like he he's been he went through hell with him, losing his wife and all this stuff, and. Um, He's really having a rough time and he's finally getting things back together. And uh, now he's got a lot of damage to do, uh, damage repair to do for uh, number one is with the community. He's let a lot of things go and uh, he wants to get back into it. And I want to promote him. I want, I want him to be the wireless guy here on the reserve is what we're trying to do. And I, I approached him, I asked him, I said, what do you need from me? How can I help you? And one of the things he's asked for is uh, when we pass one of these towers to connect with fiber. And we're going to do that for him. And what we want to do is uh, promote Sixtel itself and uh, try and get him back to where it is, where he was before, before all of this happened to him. And I, I think it's very important that, you know, it was said before that everybody wants to see our own people getting ahead with these businesses. And that's what I want to do is I want to try and promote him and I want to try and get him back to where he was. And the best thing I can do to help him is interconnect these towers with fiber. And that's what we're going to do just so that, you know, he's uh, starting to do, he's, uh, he's change about and uh, some of the damage the uh, repairs that he has to do to the community, letting the community know that he's still around. And, you know, um, he's been through a lot. So I really want to try and help him. So just so you know, that's what we're going to be doing as well. So earlier on in the discussion, everybody had talked about variety. They wanted varieties of uh, different types of uh, services. So this is one other way that we're going to try and help out. So people that don't want to deal with us will have him to deal with as well. So then you got Bell and then uh, uh, 
exploring that, I guess now is Explorer or something, something or something. I don't know what they changed their name to, but uh, I think that's a little damage control there too as well. But anyway, that's what we're trying to do is promote uh, another service. Um, if we can do that, then what that does in the interim of us trying to get fiber to everybody's household, um, this will bring another venue to the table, right? So you'll have another source of internet. And I, I think that's uh, very important that, uh, you know, we get in there and we help each other. We try and try and get the coverage done as quick as possible. Yeah, I think that's that's an important uh, you know piece to all of this. Really, I know, you know in our discussions over the past months and year, you know, this council has been looking to obviously, like you had mentioned, support our own, uh, and you know, be able to have you know our own business people thrive within our territory as well, as opposed to having you know big corporations and companies come in and you know when we have people in our territory with the expertise to do it. I mean, by all means, that's what this council has said loud and clear. I think they've also said loud and clear that they do support the variety in the case of, like you've, you've mentioned, you know, giving community members that option. Um, so, you know, I think at the end of the day, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I do feel from the past discussions that yes, by all means, we want to support our own people and we want to be able to build up our business people. And, and again, for the services that our community needs and like we're in dire need right now for internet, oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, so the quicker we can do it while supporting our own, I mean, I think that's a win-win-win for everybody. So by all means, if there's anything further, I think from the chief's office that you can have, or rather that we can give to support, um, I mean, we're open to that. Okay. I just want you to know, like, uh, we're not trying to, you know, monopolize everything. That's the first thing everybody says we're trying to monopolize. We're not. Uh, what we're trying to do is promote our own businesses. And that's the most important thing. Well, I think that's the other the other piece of this too is you know every any you know when you play a game of monopoly. I mean, I think we have to get out of that way that way of thinking, right? And allow people like to there's there's a, enough of the pie to share, right? Sure. And I think that's sure. something that we need to uh, we need to speak more of and be able to promote that as opposed to you know uh, playing a a monopoly per se. Uh, but again, this council is prepared uh, and has been prepared. To support our own and to really just let's let's get it done <laughs> let's yes. get it done as quickly as we can um mr greg frazier has a question or comment oh, you'll have to come over here if you can oh. sorry just as we're well hi jeff uh, hi greg long time customer <laughs> yeah Hope you know that yes uh, nice to see you um would it be a good idea to include uh, Gary in uh, in some of the discussions that you're going to be having uh, as you move forward with, uh, I guess, there would be the financing? Um, or would that be a little bit premature at this stage? Well, right now, we're kind of got him locked out because of the grant um, procedures that we've already been through. If he had been there at the start, then I'd say yes. Um, we can't change anything that's already been slated. The government's pretty particular. If, you know, you got to follow the order. This is the way it is. Um, so when I approached him, I approached him af after the fact, and I approached him on the side, and I asked him, you know, what can we do to help you? And that's what he came back. He said, if you can get me fiber to these towers, I can get more customers on. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to, any place we pass, if he's got a tower up or intends on putting a tower up, he's uh, in the process of doing a design. So he's going to tell me where he needs us to loop up to give him access to a fiber. And that's, that's kind of the way it's going to be where we go through areas, right? So I know on this first build, there's three towers that we can help him with right away. So all down fourth line. So and that'll get down the third line and, and down the fifth line, that type of thing. So that, that's kind of where we're starting with it. Okay, Hopefully you. that answered your question. Oh, that's good. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeff, for, uh, for coming in front of council and providing us with the, the latest update to this project. Again, uh, we'll work, uh, Tammy and yourself, we'll work on, on the next steps uh, to that okay. particular issue. Mm -hmm. 
Um, in the meantime, again, yes, our goal is to get it done as quickly as we can and while supporting our own. Okay, very good. Okay, all right, it's been moved and seconded. Everything's carried. So thank you, Jeff. Uh, do look forward to our next steps. Okay, on again here. Mona, have a good night. Oh, yeah. Okay, Council, I'm going to continue to move, move along here with our agenda. Our next delegation is our communications coordinator, Caitlin Court, uh, who will be speaking uh, and giving a presentation on our plans for this upcoming Orange Shirt Day on September 30th. So good evening, Caitlin. I see you on the line. I will pass the floor right over to yourself to begin your presentation. Hi, I'm just gonna share my screen because I developed a presentation for you guys. Can you see this? Yes, we can. Okay, so hi again, my name's Caitlin. I'm the communications coordinator in the policy records and communications department. For those of you who have not met me yet, I am Bay of Quinty Mohawk from Six Nations and I've been working at Six Nations of the Grand River for almost a year now. Um, so I'm obviously going to be presenting the plans and logistics for Orange Shirt Day this year. Um, this will include an overview, a deep dive into our picnic pack giveaway, a uh, drive through event, and our social media campaign. Um, for the overview, to start, Six Nations of the Grand River and the Survivor Secretariat have planned or have partnered up for the Orange Shirt Day events. We have planned an Orange Shirt Day drive through event uh, for Picnic Packs giveaway on September 29th, where community members will be able to pick up a picnic pack for their families to enjoy on September 30th, as well as a social media campaign to raise awareness about Orange Shirt Day and what our community is doing on that day. Um, for the Orange Shirt Day drive through event, it will be on September 29th, uh, 11.30 until we run out of picnic packs. This event will be held at Oneida Business Park. Um, for the giveaway, we have 800 picnic packs with meal servings for five people, and it will be limited to one per, per household so that more community members have an opportunity uh, to grab one for their family. We have already ordered um, a picnic blanket, a grocery bag, a reusable one, a reusable cooler bag, herb starter kits um, where they might get basil, rosemary, or uh, sage, and then an Every Child Matters flag. And I can't wait to share what we have in store for food. Um, health promotions have been working closely with our working group to ensure it is a healthy, balanced meal. Um, for our social media campaign, um, this is our next part of our plan, and it's to raise awareness of Orange Shirt Day and also share how our community is raising awareness and honoring every child on September 30th. Um, we started off this launch with a postcard being distributed to community members' households, um, so stay tuned for that. Some households are still getting those. Um, and we're asking everyone to share photos of how they're raising awareness by using the hashtag SNWearsOrange um, to share with SNGR and the community on how they are raising awareness and honoring every child. We're hoping to see photos from events around the community, families enjoying their picnic packs together, and so much more. So with them using that hashtag, we'll be able to see it on our end, and then we are going to share it on our Six Nations of the Grand River platform on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, so that's kind of a very high level overview and I'm sorry that I'm quick, I'm a little nervous today, but if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for walking us through your presentation. If I could ask you just to uh, stop your share screen so I can see, there we go. Okay, do appreciate it. I know that was uh, really quick, but I, uh, again, uh, excited for the planning of this as well. And I want to say thank you, Nyawa, to your group, your planning committee for uh, doing this work. Uh, I'm going to look to any questions or comments at this point in time. I see Michelle has her hand raised. Okay, thanks, Caitlin, and your team for putting this together. I want to say... Um, I can motion to, to move it as well as I will be there to volunteer. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's been moved by Michelle to accept the Orange Day presentation uh, for uh, from Caitlin Court. Is there a seconder? I'll second. I'll second. 
second by Sherry Lynn. Apologies for uh, the disruption. Uh, further questions or comments, Audrey? Oh, sorry, Audrey, you may still be on mute. Yes, I am. Thanks, Mark. No I just problem. wanted to know about logistics, uh, Caitlin, around parking. There's only 800 baskets, and I think you're going to get a lot more people than 800. So I guess what's the plan there? Um, are, are you going to have some kind of a plan for also when you get low, that not letting any more people off the highway into the uh, Oneida Business Park? Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, there won't be any need for parking because we will have pop-up tents right by the road. So once they get on to Generations Drive, we'll just be handing them out to the cars. And then as soon as they get it, they'll be moving right along. Um, for We're going to be posting throughout the day, uh, just giving little updates of what's happening and how many we have left over and then um when it gets close we'll probably have people by the end of generations drive just letting everyone know that we're running out and that at that time that will tell people that there is no more we'll also have some signage up so once we're run totally ran out we'll be taking that out so people know that it's obviously not happening anymore yeah well Thanks for that. I just wonder, maybe also, Caitlin, I know I touched uh, as well on this uh, with Tammy earlier, just in relation to uh, connect with our police and the, in traffic control plans uh, in the case of that we do see, uh, you know, for that time frame, uh, a kind of influx of traffic. So uh, if we could add that to your list and maybe even potentially an opportunity um, to look at Chiefswood Park in a partnership. Uh, of that to maybe, you know, our community members want to go and enjoy their picnic packages at Chiefswood Park, uh, Veterans Park. I know, obviously, uh, you know, we're, we're going to try to have the downtown core of Ashrigan as well, uh, kind of painted orange with some new fresh orange, uh, you know, um, bows and as well as the walkways uh, redone leading up to 30th. Uh, so wondering if maybe that's opportunity, Caitlin, to maybe touch base with the Development Corporation in partnership maybe for uh, community members to uh, enjoy their packages at the Chiswood Park as well as our uh, downtown Veterans Park. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. And I'm planning on reaching out to Public Works as well, just so that everyone's aware that we're having our drive through event. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any further questions or comments? I think you could use, can you use that right now to speak? No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, uh, Councillor Fraser has a question or comment. Oh, I've got a slide over there, Caitlin. <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. Uh, nice initiative that you got going here. Um, I, my question was just um, the accommodating elders. Was there any um, consideration for uh, one, getting the information out to them? Because a lot of them don't have, they don't have the, the computers and the, and the hashtags and that is there what did you put into consideration maybe making them aware and also i know you're limited with the number of 800 and i i, I agree with audrey it might be a it might be a big uh, turnout um but did you think of anything maybe to help out the elders at the same time um so for Everyone knowing about this event, we put a postcard out to every household so it will tell them what time um, and date. Also noting the social media campaign, but they don't have to be involved in that to get a picnic pack. Um, the whole reason for the picnic pack is to get families together in a time of honoring and raising awareness. Um, and then also most people end up coming and getting it for their family uh, members that cannot attend. Um, as long as they can somehow tell us that that is what they're doing, uh, please honor the system and let other people get their item as well. But we would be willing to give them one so that they can deliver it to their elder if they're unable to attend. Also um, noting that it is serving five. So if they want to invite their the person they know to their own picnic, they're more than welcome to do that as well. Thanks, uh, thanks for that, uh, Greg, as well. But I think he, he does have a good, good point in terms of maybe we can do a uh, thing, maybe take it a step further with uh, partnerships, uh, you know, with the lodge, um, or, you know, maybe we can look at ways of doing something a little bit smaller on a smaller scale for our elders to at least have 
uh, deliveries to them as well. I'm not sure if maybe that's an opportunity with the time frame that we do have, but I uh, do hear uh, Greg's point on that as well. So if we can maybe note that and maybe take that back for the committee for consideration. Okay. Sounds there, good. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Caitlin. Is there any further questions or comments for Caitlin? I see Helen has her hand raised. Yeah, I was going to raise the same uh, issue as Greg. Uh, you know, I've been saying all along how not everybody has social media. So we have to make sure we reach everyone. And as far as the cards go, like I got a card in my mailbox, but I have five people using my mailbox. So that means unless I tell them, five people are not going to get a card. So that's something to think about as well. You know, I'm a firm believer in using the newspapers and the, and the radio and everything, not just social media. Yeah, we actually um, have been putting it in the newspaper. So the first week we put it in Turtle Island News um, and Two Row Times. And from now on, we'll be doing every other. Um, and then uh, I don't know what we're doing also. <laughs> we're also, we've included that in the Chief's uh, update as well every yes. Friday on the radio. Um, so again, I think we're exhausting every avenue of communications as well. But I do, uh, again, I, I wanna stress the, the elders portion. So maybe Caitlin, we can go back to the working table uh, and see what we could do on that, on that front. Sounds good. Oh, I see a comment from Sherry Lynn as well, putting it on our sign. So yeah, so we'll exhaust every uh, really avenue of, co of communications uh, to get this uh, word out as well, so that our communities are uh, well, well aware in, in advance know uh, what's happening. Okay, is there any further questions or comments? Again, do uh, want to say a huge nyawa to Caitlin and your team for, for planning this. I think it's going great so far. I think it's a great idea. Uh, and again, like you say, it's a time for our community to come together uh, and to, to honor all of our children. Uh, you know, and I think that's a, that's a great way of doing this. So do appreciate your work, Caitlin. So that being said, it's been moved and seconded. I'm gonna go to a vote, all in favor. Any opposed? Okay, seeing or hearing none, uh, motion is carried. Thank you, Caitlin. Yeah, well, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Okay, the next item I have is the adoption uh, of that does complete our delegation portion for this evening. Uh, the next item I do have is the adoption of the general council minutes of August 9th. I can it's moved uh, by Michelle. Is there a seconder? I will. Second by Carrie. Further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, the next item I have on the agenda is the by-election report. Uh, so this is a motion to accept of the CEPO, the Chief Electoral Polling Officer's report of the by-election of the 58th uh, Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council. Obviously, we've just sworn in Councillor Greg Frazier. So now this is a follow-up uh, accepting uh, the uh, report from our CEPO. So it's in your packages, looking to a mover and I'll second. Move work, Audrey. Moved by Audrey, second by Helen. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none then, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, continuing on with the agenda, I have under scheduling uh, recommendation 8-1. Uh, this is to approve Councillors Hazel Johnson, uh, as well as Nathan Wright uh, to attend the uh, Grand River Employment and Training Gretty Annual Retreat, uh, which is happening uh, September 15th, 16th, and 17th at the Casino Rama. So I'm looking, oh, 
for I'll a motion. Hot. It's Audrey. I'll move. Okay. Sorry, I just want to check in with Nathan here. He has his hand raised. Real um, and um, just a clarification, Ready is paying for expenses. Okay. Sure. Okay. So actually, Nathan is unable to attend this event, uh, or that rather this, um, yeah, this event uh, on these dates. However, Hazel, I believe, is still good to go. And, and he also just in included that Greddy is uh, paying for all expenses. So there's no expenses to the council. So I'll just need to amend the motion to just have Councillor Hazel Johnson to attend the uh, Gretty annual retreat on the 15th, 16th, and 17th. Is there a mover? I moved. Moved by Audrey, seconder. I can. Second, second by Michelle. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. I move. I'll second. Moved by Audrey, seconded by Michelle to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Yes. Carry. That recommendation waiving second reading, that should be 8 1 or is that 6 1? Oh, it's recommendation 8 2. Uh, I don't know, but it says. Wave second reading on recommendation. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for that correction. So it should read recommendation oh. eight. Thanks for that, Carrie. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Okay, recommendation eight three. This is again for Councillor Sherry Lynn Hill uh, to attend the Indian Gaming Association seminar, uh, the master's class on October 19th through the 21st. Uh, hosted in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada by the Indian Gaming Association. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify, uh, Sherry Lynn, was this also uh, paid through the Gaming Commission? Um, yeah, but I wasn't sure yet. Oh, my apologies, sorry, Sherry. Can you try speaking now? Uh, yeah, but I, I didn't think I was putting it on yet, though. <laughs> oh, okay, my apologies. I wasn't sorry. sure. Well, uh, we can, if you would like to defer this item, we have a couple, uh, I think. A, a yeah, week. I'll defer that. Okay. Thanks for that, Sherilyn. Apologies on our end. So that leads us into upcoming meetings. So we actually just did our uh, political liaison yesterday. Um, Tuesday this evening is our right now happening, our general council. Upcoming week is Monday, September 19th, our general finance. Uh, and then into September uh 26. The following week is our pol next political liaison, as well as following that, the 27th is our next general council for this month. So do again want to uh, look to community to advise. We are back into the chambers at this point and we're going with a hybrid model. So that means that we're both having uh, both online on Zoom as well as in person in the chambers. Our goal again is to have all of our meetings um, live streamed when we're fully back into the chambers. So again, it is at this point open to the public. So, so if members are wanting to come uh, and see uh, what's happening at the meetings, they're more than welcome to come into the chambers. Uh, and again, our goal is to continue to maintain our live stream. We have seen a lot of um, uh, viewers and engagement since being on Zoom. Um, so that actually, I know over, and I think we're gonna do a report and look to our comms people on that report uh, of just how many people we've engaged while we've been on Zoom. As we know in the past, uh, you know, within the council chambers, uh, you know, we don't have the full on uh, room to host, uh, you know, the amount of people that we've seen on Zoom. So we wanna maintain, uh, you know, that our engagement with our members, uh, you know, uh, has that uh, as well as, again, we continue on uh, with doing business in the most uh, uh, open and transparent way. Uh, so that's really the goal of where we're at. Um, that does uh, complete, actually, sorry, I have one new business item. Uh, that I'm going to um, look to Councillor Hazel to speak to. And just before I go to the new business item, I am going to shift out. I do have to catch a flight to speak at the special interlocutor uh, uh, um, event tomorrow in Edmonton. So at this point in time, just before I go to Hazel, 
I will look to a motion to accept uh, Councillor Nathan uh, to finish as chair for the meeting. I will look to a mover and seconder to for that. I'll move to have Nathan chair. Thank you, Michelle. Moved by Michelle, seconded by Sherry Lynn uh, to have Nathan assume the chair duties. Again, thank you to everybody. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. So at this point in time, I'll pass it over to Nathan to then get into the new business item. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great evening. Okay, no problem. Okay, while he's logging in, I'll just pass the floor over to Councillor Hazel to begin her uh, new business item. Mark, can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah, but, um, we can hear you, Hazel. We can hear you. Mark's not the chair anymore. He's left, okay. Hazel. Okay, I just wanted to bring it before council to, to for us all to be on the same page with the fact that today I heard on TV by uh, Justin Trudeau that Monday is going to be declared a national holiday and that's for the funeral of um, the late uh, Queen Elizabeth. And they said they were also speaking with the um, Ontario I don't know if it's going to be a joint statement on behalf of both provincial and federal, but I just wanted to know, like, are we going to observe that because we're sort of under the federal branch of all of this? And I think, too, all the schools will be affected. The schools will be closed as well. Schools are under provincial, um, but federal schools will still be open. Um, as this is administrative, I'm going to see Darren if uh, if you've given this some thought, realizing that the announcement just happened this afternoon. Yeah, hi, Nathan. Um, I actually think it's actually a political decision, this particular one, um, for a couple of reasons. Um, I just actually just confirmed that the province is not declaring it a, a, a day of a day off, a statutory day. So it is specific to, to federal. Um, jurisdiction and it is a question of jurisdiction um, but I also feel that you know it's a it's a very political uh, approach to the to whether we observe it or not I mean we have a long-standing relationship with with uh, England and specifically the Queen of <coughs> England in particular in terms of the Holborn proclamation etc so I think that's that's a consideration um, I we didn't we had we had some discussion at sat this morning about it to uh, to be honest, and uh, we couldn't really come up with uh, one way or the other. We saw pros and cons to to both ways, so that's why it's been brought. And I thank you, Hazel, for bringing it because I felt it should have been discussed at the table here tonight. Um, but yeah, I think we kind of deferred to council to make a decision on this. Thanks for that, Darren. I see I did see some hands going up, so I'm going to go to Helen first, uh, and uh, we'll go around the floor and see where we went. Oh uh, yeah, there, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, people that aren't happy about the Queen. What she did to us as First Nations people or what she didn't do, I guess. She's one of the colonizers. So I'm not myself, I'm not in particular favor of honoring anything the Queen does whether it's her death or her whatever she did, because I don't think she's been very good to us. That's my opinion, but I've heard a lot of other people expressing the same. I think it, I think our community is probably kind of split on that, I would think. Definitely agree, Helen. And, and uh, I've heard both sides as well. Um, People quite passionate on both sides, and and um, but the majority, um, you know, not in favor at, at this point of of doing any honoring. Um, so, is there any other uh, comments from council? Go ahead, Greg. They can. You, 
I think last, can you hear? Can everyone hear me? Yeah, faintly, yeah. but yes. Yes, hi, it's uh, Greg here. Um, it picks you up. Oh, I have to speak louder? Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I agree that um, the, our problem is, is that uh, uh, I think a lot of our, uh, our, our trees and that would bite to the crown, which kind of puts us in a, in a bad situation, being associated with the crown, but at the same time being, you know, subject to the colonization. Um, negative effects so i agree I, I don't think i don't think the queen or, or even the new king should be honored in, in any way i don't know what i don't know proper to bring up but i don't know if if, if what the afn's uh position on this they're, they're a political body um maybe darren could tell us but um but i think overall uh, i don't think it should be I don't think should be honored in any way. Thanks for that. So the AFN's come out very strong on the, taking a neutral position, being hard on her for accountability, at the same time acknowledging the existence, I guess. Um, but again, I don't think folks have gone so far as to make a determination because the announcement <laughs> happened um, this afternoon. Is there any other comments? Definitely acknowledging Sherry Lynn's comment in the chat. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think too, we should even look at bread and cheese, but um, I, I would say, yeah, we have to work through this and it's gonna be a national holiday forever or just this year? No, just, uh, just an observance for this year. Okay, yeah, because it's it is your funeral on Monday. Um, yeah, I'm with Helen and hate Helen and Sherry Lynn and Greg. Okay, so I'm hearing business as usual, um, Darren, in terms of uh, uh, not observing that particular day, uh, unless other councillors have uh, have some thoughts. Um, I see your hand up there. Yeah, no, I just I think that that's you know that's why we wanted wanted to have the discussion. I think all really good points. Um, I, I think uh, Greg's points are really well taken in terms of the quandary it kind of puts us in. We also have a, a portion of our staff who are, who are non-Indigenous, who also would, would probably like to observe that, maybe not a, a big portion, but what we had thought about was maybe we allow them an hour to observe it. Um, I believe the funeral, like perhaps it's in the morning or afternoon, we'll have to determine what time that is, but that's something that we had thought as an option. Um, it could be an hour in the afternoon. I think at the funeral's at one or commencing at one or just sort of a moment of silence even. Um, but I think people have probably already done that on their own. Um, so I'm, I'm completely fine with whatever this council decides and we'll put the communication to, to staff um, right after tonight. Perfect, okay, um, Audrey. Audrey, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Oh, I am speaking, Nate, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I said I like Darren's suggestion of giving people that, that option. Yep. I, don't know, I don't think it should be just for people who are non-members. I think it should be for anybody who wants to take, take that time off. You don't know what their relationship was or what their beliefs are or what their faith is or anything, but it's it's that middle ground, you know. Yeah, I totally agree, Audrey. And, and that was, I was reflecting that I did receive a few phone calls, um, just trying to advocate for both sides from community members as well. So I think we have to provide that balance as well. Hazel? Yeah, um, I guess I'm in a different place here because I, um, I look at this whole event as it's so much a part of all of our growing up years. I remember her coronation I think I was five when she was coronated and our whole life has kind of, uh, you know, always knew about the monarchy and uh, the royals, et cetera. And it's not uh, whether I don't want to honor her, I do, because she's always been a part of my, in my memory and in my life. And I do respect that. And um, 
if I, I, guess, I guess if the council chooses that they don't want to take that time off and I'm a counselor, the thing is we always have to go with the council decision and I can do that. Thank you. Thanks, Hazel. And, and yeah, I think that reflects the, the diversity of, of the community and, and the observance, right, for that particular day. And, and, and I think maybe um, just that hour of reflection and providing that at least at a minimum uh, and Darren going that, that going down that road as well will be um, a, a good spot for us uh, for that particular day. Okay, so I am hearing uh, that we are um, and Darren kind of summed it up in terms of providing some commentary around that, uh, providing folks um, with uh, an hour to reflect and, and observe. But again, that doesn't preclude folks from, you know, the community uh, fully participating going forward. Okay, so I am going to move us into the in-camera portion of our agenda. If I can just get a minute... Um, just to trans transition, um, maybe what I'll do is let's uh, start the in camera at 7.20. Let's adjourn this meeting. Yeah, I just need a motion to adjourn. Oh, I didn't hear someone move it, sorry. <laughs> so I think Michelle moved. Greg's gonna second. Okay. Give, uh, give me five minutes. I just have to get a paper copy of that.